Good evening. Good evening. I think we're live. So good evening. How are you this evening? I started the day with really, really curly hair in my group this morning when I did a live and it's kind of dropped during the day. So it's not quite as wild as it was this morning, which is always good, I think. Um, so I hope you're sitting comfortably. I hope you've had a wonderful day. I hope you're having a great week. Um, I've got so much for you tonight. Um, I know that the topic is about um, are you in the Poor Artist Club? But the content tonight is so much more than that. Um, it's difficult to even describe how that content is going to be received and delivered tonight. But I'm just going to say it like it is. Um, because it, it touches on a topic that actually can be quite emotional. Um, and I think we should talk about these topics. I think it's really important to talk about these topics. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to kind of relate it to a few things and messages that I've been rece receiving from wherever they come from in the universe. Anyway, for those of you that don't know me, welcome. I am Mandy Nicholson and I am the creative genius consultant, artist and author, and I help creative women to launch, grow and scale their businesses and make more moolah. Um, and I show up every Tuesday night with some real value for you guys to make you think. Also tonight, I'd stay till the end, please, if you can. If you can't, watch back on replay because I'm going to be going over how you can get into the five-day challenge and how you can win um, a retreat, a luxury retreat worth £1,400. And you don't want to miss out on that. And you don't want to miss out sharing that with people that you know and love and that opportunity. So I asked the question, are you in the Poor Artist Club? And what I've actually done tonight is I've done a one-page PDF for anybody who wants it, I'll share it as a Facebook post after this live. Um, I'll share it on to the other platforms as well, if if they will allow me to. If I can get that on there, I'll send it to my uh, Twitter and to LinkedIn accounts as well. Um, but I wanted to talk about this term, the star, the poor artist club, where it comes from, why it's there and what it means and it, that there's actually quite a lot behind this and I think it's important to talk about so please stay with me. So the trope of the tortured artist is thought to have been started by Plato. I'm reading this off my notes. So Plato was the one who actually created this image of the tortured artist and it's it's actually gone through the centuries and grown legs and arms and it's connected with the tortured artist or the poor artist club. It's connected with mental illness, the tortured artists, the poor artists. They're too tortured to be able to earn money because they're, they're, their work is about this, this tortured soul. And creativity and mental illness have been connected over time. Some mental disorders have actually helped artists to do great work enabling them to express their torment. So I want you to think here about Van Gogh. Some of Van Gogh's best work was produced when he was in one of his lowest places in his life. He was actually in a, a mental asylum, asylum at one point recovering. Um, and in that place, he painted some of his most powerful works. He still didn't make any money from it, but he was the epitome of the poor artist, the tortured artist, because he didn't make any money. Sorry about that. That's the uh, heavy revers going up and down the high street. <laughs> um, yeah, he didn't make any money in his lifetime. He didn't sell many paintings in his lifetime. He sold a lot after his death, but that was of no use to him whatsoever. And he was the epitome of the tortured artist. And the trope or the idea of the poor tortured artist has been criticised as well for romanticising mental illness as a necessary ingredient of creativity. So I'm reading this off this one page PDF that I have created as a reminder about why people perceive creativity in this way. And according to a survey done by a significant university, 
the viewer of paintings and artwork credits the work of the tortured artist as superior superior when they are told of the mental illness of that artist so van gogh's paintings are, are absolutely internationally famous now and actually so valuable that you know you or i could never even breathe near them almost and it's because of his tortured soul and his, me his mental illness that these paintings are so revered and understood at a whole different level. So it continues to romanticize and to link this tortured soul, this poor artist to creativity. So this is why it runs through the thread of society. And I don't think it's valuable at all. Low wages and long working hours are for artists um contribute to mental health problems so you know poor artists are poor they work for a long time most people who are not creative do not understand the amount of time that it takes to produce a work of art a piece of art something creative crafters that make gift that make greetings cards that make gifts it takes a long time to produce these beautiful bespoke items. Um, so it's long hours for low pay, and that has an impact on mental health as well. So again, we continue to perpetuate through society this um, poor artist club, and then we get down to the bottom and it's perceived almost as cool to be a member of the poor artist club. When I was at university, and I'm going to just say this like it is, it was cool to be in your paint splattered dungarees, in your bedsit, making a whole pot of soup last a week because you had no money because you were a poor artist studying at university. I've experienced that. I've actually, it's not a myth. I have experienced that when I was at university. I'm sure it still goes on today. It's almost like, you know, do you want to be in my gang? So again, it, we continue to perpetuate. I'm sure it's moved on a bit since my time at uni, and I'm sure it's a bit better now. I hope so, because my daughter's just about to go to uni and do a degree in art and design. And there are some people that are very successful in the creative space. But like anywhere else, it's a really small percentage. It's that top 1%, isn't it? You know, many musicians go into their craft expecting to not be you know you two and bono or led zeppelin or you know um beyonce it's it's a small a very very small percentage that are that successful it's the same with artists it's the same with sculptors creatives it's a very small percentage that make it big during their lifetime and that goes with you don't if you think of musicians you think of the poor musician the poor artist club works through so many different creative industries. So not just artists, musicians, dancers, theatre players, they're not rolling in money and filled with abundance, are they? Not that much has changed, to be honest. I know that. I, I know that in my heart. It hasn't really changed because for the majority of creatives, it's still exactly the same. It was the same for me. I experienced it. So when, when it's happened to you, you you're talking through experience. However, you are entitled to not be in this club. You are entitled to earn your worth and you are entitled to be wealthy. What they don't teach, what they don't teach you along the way is how to apply your creative talent practically in the real world. They, you are not taught how to be an entrepreneur in the four years when you do your degree in art and design or fine art or whatever it is you do, it's not a big part of the curriculum. In fact, I was told to expect to be poor for about five to 10 years after I left university, because that's how long it takes to establish your reputation in the creative space. So you're not only not taught it, you're sent out into the world expecting to be in the poor artist club. So how do you get past that? It's the gap, isn't it, of having this talent and not knowing how to actually do the business around this talent. So that's where the gap is. It's not you. It's nothing you're doing wrong. 
it's society and the academic system and the educational system that we have set up at the moment. It's based on Victorian values and standards, and it does not meet the needs of the modern artist and creative. Yes, there are, a, 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 again, a very small percentage that have amazing Instagram accounts and have millions of followers and are making money through Instagram and perhaps through YouTube. Um, using their craft and their creativity. Um, but a lot of that is perception. Many of them are still not making what you think they are just because they've got a huge following because it's not about a huge following. It's about a loyal following of raving fans. Hello, I've got another person saying hello there. Of raving fans who are buying from you and you as an artist becoming an entrepreneur and growing into that skin and learning how to do business and create multiple income streams and passive income so that you can actually work on your creativity. Many people are doing okay, um, have enough to live on, so therefore they don't, they think they don't have anything more to do. Whereas if actually you were learning how to become an entrepreneur, creating passive income streams, multiple passive income streams, so that you are secure and therefore could then spend more time on your creativity, then you would be well and truly not in the poor artist club. And this is the gap that I fill when I work with my clients. This is what I teach my clients how to do. It's okay, to, it's okay for me to paint and it's okay for me to write. It's okay for you to do both of those things as well. But if that's all I do without doing anything else, even with the best social media platforms in the world, I still won't make enough money for me to live the life I want to and have the time that I want to have in that life to do the creative things that I love doing. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you want this PDF, let me know and I'll send it to you in Messenger um, because I think it's a real stark reminder of how this this perceived thing of the poor artist, the, the tortured artist has gone through time and continued to be perceived in the same way, no matter what we do. Doctors are one, at one point in our history were seen as barbarians, you know, butchers practicing on human beings and stealing bodies. And they were horrific. Now they are revered as, you know, jobs to have, careers to have. If you are a doctor, nobody ever asks you, what is it you do? But if you tell them you're an artist, they'll ask you what you paint and, you know, what's your proper job? Because I've been asked those very questions but nobody asked that of a doctor. So their perception in history has changed. The artist has been perceived this way since Plato's time. It's time for it to change. And that's why I have stepped into the creative space to bring about change. So if you don't know already about my five day challenge, it starts next Monday, Monday, the 20th of September. I am going to start my biggest launch ever, my five-day challenge, teaching you business basics to help you make more money as an artist and a creative. So not just artists, all creatives. It can help anybody in the creative space because it's business basics, but business basics communicated in a way that you will understand, that you will get. And you need to join. There's a link in the comments above or to the side, wherever they are, to join the five day challenge and get yourself in the five day challenge group uh, because you can't do it if you're not in there. Um, do that, please, because I really want to help as many people as possible next week. And it will be a, a game changer for you. You're going to get five activities to do over the week, one per day. You're going to get a, a downloadable printable workbook to use there's a video to watch and in the evening every single evening there's a live to answer all the questions and cover all the points that are raised through the day in the group so please don't miss out on this great opportunity um, also I have a share campaign running so if you share the link for the challenge with somebody that you know that is creative that would benefit from being on this five-day challenge and you join the challenge yourself and you engage in the challenge using the hashtag that's in the comments above, you will be put into a draw to win a 
luxury retreat at my new creative retreat in Scotland next year worth £1,400. So don't miss out on either of those because they, I have... I have designed these to help to change this perception in the creative space and to help lots and lots of people make more money. Okay, so that's do not miss out on those things. Please do not miss out on those things. Get yourself in. Even if you're not traditionally a creative, come and join the challenge because you'll get loads out of it. It's business basics. You'll get loads out of it. You'll learn loads and you'll go away and you'll go and have a look at your business in a completely different light. So before I go tonight, I want to talk to you about noticing things. It's a little bit off topic, but I can't help it because... I had a really interesting week last week of messages, wherever they were coming from, call it God, call it the universe, call it whatever you want to call it. There was definite messages coming my way. Now, I am a little bit woo woo, but still quite, you know, business focused. I think there's I'm very open minded. I think most creatives are that there has to be something bigger than us and there has to be something that shows up and changes, sends us messages. Like I've been getting this for years now. So last week I had repeating numbers coming at me consistently throughout the week. The numbers 111, 3333, the number 7777, and then a couple of other things that came up that were really significant. So one of them was the passion flower introduced to me by two separate people at two se separate times and sent to me in a meditation. I actually drew the passion flower. And I don't remember ever seeing one before or I probably had but not noticed it. So the passion flower and then bats. So I had some really, I had the numbers. So I've over the weekend, I've researched the angel numbers and numerology for these numbers. I've researched the past passion flower and the bat and the significance and relevance of all of those things. And there's a common thread running through all of the, the different messages that I had last week. And that common thread, I'm going to read it out to you. So this is, this is my very big journal. I journaled at the weekend. There you go. I've got two pages of journal notes looking at the significance of all these things that happened to me. And I wanted to share that with you tonight because it's really important that we notice what's being put in front of us. It's noticing it and then investigating it and then taking action that makes all the difference for us. So this week's messages have come thick and fast through the same repeated numbers, symbols and reinforcement from others. I've been using my wisdom and gifts to create something special in the five day challenge that I, you know, I've just talked to you about. Um, and I know I can bring great change. My messages have been those numbers, 111, 3333, 7777, the passion flower and bats. And in summary, I am experiencing an activation or awakening, taking me towards inspired action. I need to have complete faith that I will manifest my desires. My actions will impact the collective consciousness and community. I must keep up the good work and prepare for major life changes. That's a summary of the messages I was receiving last week from wherever they were coming from in lots of different ways, in lots of different methods. And I wanted to share that with you tonight on the live to say, please notice what's coming your way. Please notice the things that show up again and again. If you glance at the clock and it's 11.11 11, and you notice it two or three times throughout the week, there's a message in that. If you glance at the clock and it's 3.33, there's a message in that. There's a message in everything that's coming your way. Go and investigate it. Even if you're not woo-woo and -woo you're thinking, Mandy, that's a load of tosh that you're talking right now. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. And I am not telling you this as fact. I am telling you, this is what I have experienced. And when I went to research all of that, that was the paragraph I ended up with, which for me reinforced one thing. The word that came through throughout it all was faith. And I'm not a religious person as such, 
but the threes are actually about the Holy Trinity and divinity. Faith is mentioned in all the other numbers, in the age old numbers, and the passion flower is a, is a significant flower and sil- symbolic of the crucifixion and the 10 faithful disciples. And the bat symbolism is about major changes coming into your life. So I choose to look at these things that show up in my life, look for the significant and take comfort from the messages, wherever they are coming from, that I am on the right path. And I will continue banging on about poor artist club and that you do not need to be belong to it and that where it comes from, why it's there and how we as a collective community change it because all change comes from people speaking out and talking about things. Change does not come from staying in that club and staying silent. So get your backsides into my challenge, come and have some fun and start to change things in your world. Much love. I will see you on Thursday morning for episode 107 and next Tuesday evening. Same time, same place. Bye for now. Have a wonderful week.